Hello, my name is Florian and I welcome you to IT Tech Tips. What we did in the last videos of our setting up the lab series so far is to set up all client operating systems and the servers we're going to use in the near future. But at the moment they still connect by the net of Oracle VirtualBox to the internet and also they have no way to talk to each other. In this video we're going to configure the router we have set up before. We are also going to provide static IP addresses to all operating systems. You might object that providing a static IP address to a client operating system is a bad idea and you're correct. However, we are still going to do it for our lab purposes so we can prove this point in one of the later videos. Let's have a look. As mentioned in the introduction and in the previous episodes, we're going to configure our Acme-router now, so that the other virtual PCs can connect through the router in our network. For that we're going to have to configure the network interfaces of our Acme-router first. So click on Acme-router and go to Settings. Then to network and as you can see we have the default network adapter configured at the moment which is NAT and which will connect the Acme-router on one interface to the Oracle VirtualBox internet. But now we need a second network adapter which is of the type internal network and we're going to call the network Acme-Net. So when we now start Acme-router Windows will have two network interfaces, one connected to the Oracle VirtualBox internet through NAT and the other one will be connected to an internal fixtures network we're going to use for our Acme Corporation called AcmeNet. So click on Acme-router and start and log in with the password we've created before. Wait until all tools have started, just give it one or two minutes and then, and then go to Server Manager. Go to Manage and add roles and features. In the wizard there will be a few helpful informations and I recommend that you read it before clicking next each time. So click next. The installation type is role-based or feature-based installation. Uh, click next on server selection because we're using the local server. And here in server roles we're going to use remote access. Click next. Scroll down through the list to see what's available. We don't need anything special, click next again. And now there's some information about the role remote access we have just selected. I recommend that you read it. So after you've read it, click next. As you can see we now have a selection of details of this role remote access we can select. At the moment we're going to use routing as the only detailed role for our lab environment. So select routing and you will see a summary of additional features which are required for the role routing. These additional features are called dependencies. So that is stuff that Windows needs for this role to be activated. Scroll to the list to learn what dependencies are necessary. Keep the checkbox Include Management Tools selected and click on Add Features. As you can see, a second role was activated automatically. Please keep it checked. Windows knows best 
which services it needs to run the selected service. Click Next and you will see some detailed information about the IIS service, which is a dependency. You can read through that as well. And then click Next for a summary about the role services which are about to be installed. So this is what's going to happen after you click Next. Click Next and install. This will take quite some time. I sped up the video a little bit. After the installation is complete, you will not get a large notification. You will have to read carefully in the wizard window when it says installation succeeded on Acme-Router. Then it's complete. If you click close too early, that's no big deal. Windows will continue the installation in the background. Just don't shut down the server while the installation is running. When it's complete, click close to exit this wizard. We are going to restart the server for safety reasons, just to make sure that everything is up to date when we do the configuration. So right click on the Windows logo, click shut down and restart, and it's a planned restart, so select other planned. Continue. And after the reboot, log in again. As you can see in the server manager, there is a yellow exclamation mark. Actually, this exclamation mark was there before the reboot, but it's still here. And this notifies you about some configuration which is yet to be done to complete the installation of a role. So click on this exclamation mark and you can see what I just said. Click on the link to get another wizard and you will see that some options are presented which can be installed semi automatically. But we're not going to use any of these options because we want full control over what we are doing. So you can close the wizard right away. So to do that manually, click on the Windows logo on the bottom left, go to Windows Administrative Tools and probably you have to scroll down a little bit to get the link Routing and Remote Access. Click on that. And as a first thing, we're going to pin it to the taskbar because we're going to use this program in the future again. So you have easy access to it. Right click on the icon and select pin to taskbar. So the icon will now be persistent even after a reboot of the server. Click on Acme-Router and as you can see, there is no configuration present yet. That's why there is a red dot. Select Configure and Enable and click Next. Here you are presented with some more options than in the wizard we have seen just after the reboot. We are going to select Network Address Translation because this Acme-Router will do a network address translation for the internal network. Click Next and as you can see we don't see any network interfaces. This is a bug of this wizard. If you know it, no worries. But if you don't know it, you might get confused because you're doing it right and it's still not showing up. I'll show you how to fix it. Click Next and finish without actually configuring anything. The fix is quite easy. You just have to restart the wizard again and everything will show up. Again, click on Configure and Next. Choose NAT again. And here you can see the two network interfaces which are connected to this virtual PC. Remember, right in the beginning of this episode, we created a second network interface card in Oracle VirtualBox. And these are those two network interface cards which are showing up one of which is connected to the NAT of Oracle VirtualBox and the other one is connected to the internal network of our Acme NAT.
As you can see, one of the network interfaces has an IP address. This is the IP address which Oracle VirtualBox provides to this PC. So we know that this is the network interface card which is connected to the internet by Oracle VirtualBox. So the other interface must be the one which is connected to our internal ACMINET. Click Next and Finish. If everything worked okay, you should see a green dot indicating that the service is up and running. Open a command prompt and ping the Google DNS server 8888 to check that we are still connected to the internet. If you get a reply from the ping, we have not broken anything. You can close the routing and remote access window, reopen a command prompt and enter the command ipconfig. The output of this command will be all Ethernet adapters which are connected to this virtual PC, which should be two in our case. The one which is connected to the Oracle VirtualBox and the other one which is connected to the internal network ACMINET. The one connected to VirtualBox still have the same IP we have seen before in the wizard and the other one has an IP address starting with 169 which is a so-called dynamic private IP address. We'll get into that in some future more advanced episodes. For the moment it's just to verify that we have these two network adapters and both are working fine. Remember the two names, Ethernet and Ethernet2 and click on the Windows logo and enter Network. Go to Ethernet settings and change adapter options. What we're going to do now just for clarity, we're going to rename the Ethernet adapters to something more meaningful than Ethernet and Ethernet 2. As you can see, the names correspond to the output of the command ipconfig. So right click on Ethernet and call it VirtualBox NAT. Right click on Ethernet 2, rename it to ACMINET. If you re-enter the command ipconfig now, you will see that the output has also changed to correspond to the renaming we just did. Now we're going to have to do some IP configuration in our internal network. For that, right-click on the ACMINET network interface and choose Properties. Click on Internet Protocol version 4 and on Properties. As you can see, we currently get a dynamic IP address. And since we don't have a DHCP server in our network yet, the IP address will be the one starting with 169. We're going to set a static IP address now. A static IP address is an IP address which does not change. So click use the following IP address and enter the IP address we are entering here. 192.168. 77.1 For the subnet mask, enter 3 times 255 and on the fourth position, enter a zero. This is a 24 bit subnet mask. At the moment, you don't need to understand exactly what we are entering here. Probably there will be a companion episode in the future in which I explain IP addressing and subnetting, gateway and stuff. For the moment, just stick to the plan. We don't have a default gateway because we are the default gateway for the other virtual PCs. And we also don't need a DNS server configured on Acme-Router because we're not going to access websites at the moment. Click Close. And in the still open command prompt, if it's not open, you have to reopen one. We are again going to ping the Google DNS server to check that we have not broken anything by configuring the IP address manually. 
If you get no reply in this ping, you probably have configured the IP address of the wrong network adapter. Make sure that you configure the IP address of AcmeNet and not of Oracle VirtualBox. After you get the reply correctly, we can shut down this server. So click on shut down and order planned. After the shutdown is complete, we will create a snapshot so we can go back to this state if something breaks in the future. Click on Acme-Router, take a snapshot and we're going to call it Basic Lab and we will enter the IP address of the internal AcmeNet at the end so we can easily see the IP address without having to boot the server and entering IP config. So the snapshot is called basic lab 192.168.77.1. Click OK and that's that for the configuration of our Acme-Router. Now that we have the router set up and configured, we have to configure each of the other virtual PCs one by one, starting with Acme-DC01, our future primary server. The configuration we're going to do is basically the same for every virtual PC, so they connect through Acme-Router to the internet. First, make sure that Acme-Router is turned off, so I can showcase the meaning of the routing in a few minutes. Let's begin. Select Acme-DC01 and go to Settings, as we did before with the router. The three virtual PCs we're going to configure will only have one network adapter, but it's not connected anymore to the NAT of Oracle VirtualBox, but it's connected to the internal network we've just created before called AcmeNet. So go to Network Adapter 1 and choose Attached to Internal Network and make sure the name is AcmeNet. As you can see, it's the only internal network we've configured so far. Click OK and start Acme-DC01. Again, make sure that the router is not running. Log in with the password we've created. And we have to configure the network adapter. As you can see, it's not connected to the internet anymore because it's not in the correct network range of AcmeNet. Open a command prompt and ping the Google DNS server so I can showcase that the ping is not working. As you can see, it's not responding to the ping. Right click on the network logo, open network settings and change adapter options. Here you can see we have our one and only network adapter which is now not connected by NAT to the Oracle VirtualBox but to the internal network AcmeNet. We're going to have to do the correct IP configuration. So right click on it, select rename and call it AcmeNet just to make it easier for us in the future. Then right click on it again, choose properties and go to the IPv4 configuration. Select properties and enter the following IP address 192.168.77, that's our subnet, dot 20. This is the host address of our server. The subnet mask again is 24 bits, which is 3 times 255. Now we also have to enter the default gateway. This is the host through which the network traffic is going. So the default gateway is the IP address of the internal network adapter we've created on our Acme-Router. Can you remember the IP address? It's 192.168.77.1. We are also going to provide a DNS server IP address because in this virtual PC we are most likely going to access the internet in the future videos. 
after we enter as our preferred DNS server the Google DNS server 8888. Click OK and close. If we redo our ping, you will see that it's still failing. Why is it still failing? Because the router has not been started yet. As you can see, it's powered off, which is our showcase that the router will be working in a few seconds. So now you start the router, click on Acme-Router and select Start. And switch back to Acme-DC01. I'm now showing you a parameter for the ping command. The parameter is called dash "-t", and dash "-t", will do a continuous loop, so it will ping endlessly until you stop it manually. This way we can see a reply as soon as the Google DNS server is responding to our ping. So enter ping 8888-t and hit enter. As you can see, the requests are timing out. I sped up the video because it will take about four to five minutes until the router does its job. So don't expect the router to work instantaneously. It will take a few minutes until the network traffic is routed through the router. As soon as you get the reply from 8888, you can shut down the Acme-DC01. This time, let the router running. And of course, we're going to create a snapshot for Acme-DC01 called Basic Lab with the IP address 192.168.77.20 slash 24 for the 24-bit subnet mask. That's the configuration of Acme-DC01. We are now basically doing the same configuration as we did on Acme-DC01 on both of our client virtual PCs. We're going to assign them also a static IP address. As I've mentioned before, Assigning a static IP address to a client PC is typically not a good idea, but in this case we're doing it so I can showcase the configuration of a DHCP server in one of the future videos. Let's begin by changing the network adapter settings of Acme-Client01. Click on Acme-Client01, go to Settings, Network, and again choose Internal Network and make sure it's connected to Acme-Net. Click OK and you can start the client. Log in with the John Doe user and the password you've created. And as you can see here as well, it's not connected to the internet for the same reason as it was with the server. Open a command prompt and ping the Google DNS server 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8. I did a continuous loop here right from the beginning to save us some time. Right click on the network logo and choose properties on the Ethernet adapter. Go to the IP assignment, click edit and we're going to do a manual IP assignment. Turn on IP version 4 and enter the IP address 192.168.77, which is our network, dot 50. Enter 24, because we're using a 24-bit subnet mask, which is 3 times 255. And also enter the gateway IP address, which is the internal network adapter of our Acme-Router. So it's 192.168.77.1. Also, we're going to provide a DNS server, 8888, which is the Google DNS server. Windows 10 will recognize that it's connected to a new network as soon as the Google DNS server is replying to the ping, which is running in the background on the, in the command prompt. 
And since this is a client, we want it to be visible in the network. So in the prompt on the right side of the window, click yes. As you can see now here in the full window, the Google DNS server is responding to the ping. So we're done. You can shut down the client and of course, take a snapshot. Call the snapshot basic lab with the IP address of the client, which is 50 slash 24. Click OK. And that was the configuration for our first client. The only difference from the second client to the first client is that it will have another static IP address because it's not allowed to have the same IP address multiple times in your network. We're going through it real quick. Go to the settings of acme-client02, choose the internal network, make sure it's connected to acme-net and start it. Log in with your user John Doe and the password you've created. You see that it's not connected to the internet. Open the command prompt and enter the command for a continuous ping to 8888. As you can see, it's failing. Go to the Ethernet settings, choose properties and switch from DHCP to manual. Activate IP version 4 and provide the IP address 192.168.77.51. Remember, for the first client we used 50, here we're using 51 because it's not allowed to have the same IP address. Again, choose yes, so the client is recognized in the network. And as you can see in the background, the ping is getting a response. So we're done and can shut down the client O2. And of course, we take a snapshot called basic lab with the IP address 51 slash 24 for 24 bit subnet mask. Click OK. And that concludes the configuration of all of our four systems in the lab. You now have a working lab environment with a configured network. All systems connect through one system to the internet through the router we have configured. This way it's possible in future videos to do lab experiments without interference to your home network. Starting with the next video, we're going to showcase and experiment on various IT topics which are typically performed in a Windows environment. If you don't want to miss out on any topic, I suggest that you subscribe to this channel and ring the bell. Stay tuned, see you next time.